Mm -hmm. ah. Yo, what's up guys? So, if you've noticed, I kind of moved away from Meepo videos. I've changed up to mountain biking videos. Uh, I've fully milked the Meepo board, to be honest with you. There's only so many videos you can make about one product. Anyway, this video is sponsored by Pacifico. I actually found this in my bathroom. It's been in there for like three days. But, you know, it's aged, so it tastes better. Anyway, today I'm going to be doing a review of Real Steady. Um, it's kind of a... Let me get my notes here. See, it's kind of a, it's a GoPro uh, smoothing. This is, this is my calculus homework, dude. This is not gonna. So basically, the Hero Six, Seven, and Eight have a function called HyperSmooth, in which the GoPro records gyroscopic data of where it is in the air and uses that gyroscopic data to then stabilize the footage. Now, traditional smoothers like warp stabilizers take the footage, zoom in, zoom out, move the footage around, and warp it to keep stuff centered. And you tend to get this kind of weird warped look which you can see here so here's the original and here's me stabilizing it with a warp stabilizer and you can see it just kind of looks off but what real steady does is basically it's essentially hyper smooth but with more options and instead of using the processing power on the GoPro it can use the processing power of your whole computer so it does a better job and it gives you more options to adjust how smooth you want it you can have a little more freedom for the GoPro to move around a little bit more if you want to get some more movement in there. So Real Steady is basically hyper smooth but with more options. And here's the thing, the Hero 5 has the hardware to do hyper smooth. The GoPro Hero 5, you can find them on Amazon right now for about a hundred bucks. And it has a gyroscope in it, which means it has the hardware to do hyper smooth, technically. But GoPro has disabled HyperSmooth on the Hero 5 so that you buy the 6, 7, and 8. But with Real Steady, which is $100, and a GoPro Hero 5, which is $100, for $200, you can essentially have the smoothness and quality of a Hero 8 for half the price. Okay, so here's a few examples of the program Real Steady working on some of the shots I got. You can see right here when I first got the program, I made the mistake of letting the GoPro do its own shutter speed. So if you pay attention, you see how there's all this motion blur going everywhere and it's it looks super blurry because the GoPro Hero, it was in a dark shady forest and the Hero chose a low shutter speed, maybe 1 60th, maybe 1 80th at most to record in so that it could get more light and not have such a high ISO. Despite the fact that the footage is stabilized very well by Real Steady, it is all blurry because I didn't adjust my shutter speed. So I went into ProTune and I changed the settings so that the shutter speed is always locked at 240, which is the highest option I was able to give it. Now you can see, once I figured out that shutter speed issue, my shots look a lot better. They're not only smooth, which they were before, but they also have no blur. So the advantage of a gimbal is that it physically holds the camera in place instead of virtually holding it in place with gyroscopic data. So with a gimbal, you would be able to have a low shutter speed and a low ISO and still get good light on your shots. Now. The program does what it advertises extremely well. The footage, once it's been processed, looks super smooth. It looks better than HyperSmooth. It makes it very stable. And with HyperSmooth, you can't do 4K and you can't do high frame rates. With Real Steady, you're able to do 4K. You're able to do high frame rates. Real Steady will do anything because the Hero 5, 6, and 7 and 8, of course, are always recording that gyroscopic data, and that's all Real Steady needs. The issue is the Heroes when they do hypersmooth they do it on board and they don't have the processing power to do hypersmooth on a 4k video so with real steady you can do it on your computer so it gives you the processing power you need to do 4k and to do high frame rates with hypersmooth real steady whatever you want to call it now getting into the program the pros are it does the job great obviously so you know that's the pro the cons start coming up once you get into the program now the first issue is you can only do one video at a time. You open the program, you load up a video, it processes the video, it does a gyro sync in which it takes a few seconds of video, takes a few seconds of gyro data and uses that to sync up the whole video, figure out where the gyro and where the video line up and then uses that to line them up. Once you process the video and save it and export it, you then have to quit the program, open the program up again and then load in another movie to film it. You can't just 
mass load like 10 videos, process them all and edit them all in just one workflow. So if you have a bunch of 30 second clips, you have to sit there, open the program, open the clip, sync it, export it, and it takes a long time. So with Real Steady, you're gonna wanna try to just have more longer videos, like nine minute, 10 minute videos, instead of like recording one jump and then turning it off, just press record, do a run, do a few jumps, like record the going back and forth. And that way you can just open up Real Steady, load a video and then walk away and let it edit it for a while. And then you can come back, throw it into Premiere and then from there cut out the dead space. And another issue with it is once you load the video, you can't immediately go into settings to adjust what you want. You load the video, it computes the smoothness and it syncs up the data and then when you go into settings to change smoothness if you want it to be more smooth, if you want it to be less smooth and the big one for me is if you want to flip the gyro data. For me I wear a chest mount and for me the only way to get the camera angle forward is to put the GoPro upside down so I can angle it up. And once you quit the program, it doesn't save that setting. So every time you open the program, I open it up, I load a video, I have to wait for it to process, I then have to go in, click the settings, click gyro sync, wait for it to process again, export the video, quit the program, load a new video, wait for it to process, click settings, click gyroscopic data, flip, wait for it to process again, wait for it to export, quit the program, just the workflow is not good. Now, the program works very well and I still would gladly pay $100 for it again because it's the cheapest way for me to get hypersmooth on a, a GoPro. Like I can, here's a listing for a GoPro on eBay, 100 bucks, this is the one I bought. It works great, everything's perfectly functional and it has the hardware capable of hypersmooth and it's just been disabled by GoPro. So. I went in, bought this $100 GoPro, bought the $100 program, and for $200 I now have a very functional setup without having to buy a gimbal. And if I did buy a gimbal, the cheapest ones are $170, and they're just that, the cheapest gimbals. They're probably going to break. I'm going to have to get a new gimbal. This is just so simple. I just put the GoPro on my chest. I'm good. As programs go, Real Steady is not a great program. The UI isn't very good. It doesn't save your settings. It doesn't allow you to do multiple things at once. It's clunky. It's slow. It takes a while. As results go, Real Steady is spectacular. It does better than Hypersmooth does. It allows you to do 4K Hypersmooth. It allows you to do 120 and 240 FPS Hypersmooth. And it allows you to use the processing power of your computer to compute better Hypersmooth. It also allows you to adjust how smooth you want it. It allows you to lock or not lock the horizon so you can keep the horizon level if the camera's tilting or you can let the camera tilt the video. It just, it, it gives you a lot more options and a lot more adjustability with your shots. But again, the workflow is really bad and it doesn't save your settings. And my editing is about, an hour and a half of just sitting at my computer loading up a video and exporting it and then putting it in Premiere and only like an hour and a half of exporting in Premiere so literally half of my workflow is dealing with real steady whereas if you buy a newer GoPro that has Hypersmooth already built in you don't have to deal with that because it does it on board. So overall I'd say real steady for me was worth the hundred dollars and I think if you have a Hero 5 and you don't want to upgrade to the 6, 7, or 8, or even if you have a Hero 6 or 7 or 8, honestly, it might still be worth the $100 just because of the flexibility it gives you. However, I am disappointed that for a $100 program, this has the most basic UI. Obvi I mean, I'm sure they did some black magic fuckery to get the gyro and GoPro visual data to mesh and create a good smoothness, but they obviously did not put a lot of effort into making the UI usable. It's a very bare bones program. It's super basic. So could it be improved? Absolutely. I'm hoping as more people use Real Steady and as the team watches reviews like mine and reviews from other people that they will continue to improve the program. Right now they're on 1.0.8, so they've gone through eight iterations and I'm hoping as time goes on they will be able to improve and bring more features into the program, which I would expect from such a steep price for a program. So I understand the price tag considering the size of the market and what they have created. Anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a little long, but I just wanted to hit every talking point I could about this program. Um, probably repeated myself a few times there, but you know, for all y'all who skip through the video and don't watch the whole thing, probably good for you. So you get to see what I'm trying to say. Anyway, guys, uh, you have a good day. I'll see you on the flippity flop. Doodles.